Hey, what's up everybody? Today I want to talk about the FJ Cruiser stock antenna and one thing that it's actually really really good for and that is it acts as a really good warning sign for low parking structures and what I mean is that whenever you enter a parking structure generally there's like a sign before you enter the structure that states the maximum height and based on my measurements for my FJ from the bottom of the wheels to the top of the roof rack is exactly six foot five inches. So whenever I enter a parking structure and I see a sign with the maximum height restrictions, I'll keep that in mind. But what the antenna does is, if you notice, the stock FJ antenna is a little bit taller than the top of the roof rack. So if you enter a parking structure and your antenna catches any part of the garage structure, you'll know that you're kind of cutting it close. But if you're able to enter the structure without having the antenna touch anything at all, you're good to go. So that in itself is a good enough reason for me to keep the stock antenna on. Now I have kind of a love and hate relationship with my FJ Cruiser antenna because it is useful. However, it does kind of get in the way when I try to park my FJ in the garage. In my garage, I have a shelf on the right side of the garage that the antenna catches on sometimes whenever I try to park. Now I have a really small garage and I really need to leave myself enough room to get out on the driver's side. So in order for me to do that, I park my FJ as close to the right side of the garage as possible. Now you can see in this garage, it's not very big. On top of fitting the FJ Cruiser, I've got four bicycles in here as well as the FJ Cruiser power wheel thing that I made another video on. The antenna gets great reception, but it kind of gets in the way like I mentioned. So. I've noticed that a lot of people have aftermarket antennas that are a lot shorter than the stock antenna. So I decided to give one a try. I bought this on Amazon and I just wanted to see what it was like, whether or not it's worth it or not. But I paid $15 for this. Apparently it's a pure copper antenna. Now the reviews on this say that it's not really pure copper, but it's actually brass, I believe. But uh, I just want to test the reception today and see if it's worth it. This is the stock antenna. Now keep in mind, I'm underneath some trees here, so I'm not expecting the best, but not too bad. Um, switch over to AM. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the antenna and see what kind of reception we get without any antenna at all. All right, so now we've got no antenna on. Okay, on this AM station, there is some static, as opposed to having no static or very little static when I had the stock antenna on. So AM stations are definitely affected. Let's go over to FM. Interestingly enough, I can get a better signal without an antenna. 991 is a station that's a little further away from where I am currently. FM stations seem to be fine. This one, 106.7, has a little static. Fit and finish was pretty good. The overall quality of this seems to be pretty sturdy. It is kind of a heavy antenna, and it's not a rubber flexible one, but um, it seems to be pretty strong. Now it's on. It does mount pretty flush to the, uh, the base here. I can actually tell the difference when I, I unscrew this antenna, so uh, here's my AM channel 570. And you'll see as I start to unscrew this antenna, you'll start to hear some static. And that's the sound of me just kind of wiggling it around. Now when I remove it altogether, then the reception is significantly reduced. So there is definitely more static without it. So just, just making contact and removing it from the mask, you can hear that it's actually, it is actually affecting the reception. 
Let me try with the FM dial. I was driving around yesterday trying to test these different combinations of uh, stock antenna, no antenna, and also this, uh, this short antenna. So part of my findings is that the stock antenna is the best in terms of reception. Having no antenna, I had very, very spotty reception. A lot of times I'd get FM stations with a lot of static. And this short antenna actually isn't too bad for $15. It definitely wasn't the best, but it wasn't bad at all. Now, the AM stations, as soon as I took it off and I was driving around, I sometimes got no reception at all. But adding this little antenna uh, definitely picked it up a little bit. It wasn't the best reception, but it was better than nothing. So the reason why I considered something like this was mainly just for parking purposes in my garage, since I have that low-hanging shelf that the antenna catches on now ever since i upgraded to this head unit i found myself listening to usb music more so than the radio but that's not to say that i don't listen to the radio at all anymore when i'm taking long road trips with the family we've got a bunch of music loaded up on a flash drive here which is connected to uh, a usb cable that runs to the head unit in the back there and when we do that, I generally just remove the antenna because, you know, when I'm driving on the highway, it just kind of flaps in the wind sometimes. And, you know, if we're driving through inclement weather, I would love to keep the antenna base thread protected. So I'd, I'd love to put something in there just to kind of keep things out of there, uh, whether it's dust or moisture or water. However, I do still listen to the radio. And for 15 bucks, this short antenna does the job. It's not the best, as I mentioned but it's a relatively inexpensive solution for people who are looking to replace their stock antenna with something shorter. Hope you guys found that uh, insightful and useful and let me know what you guys are running with your antennas if you guys are going with the stock or if you're going with some kind of aftermarket antenna. So uh, that's it for me for today and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video.